Okay, for today, it's the very first day, so we're not going to get through too much, uh, but I want to uh, get you right into the math, even on the first day of the semester. This is called arithmetic and geometric sequences. All right, so you've done sequences before. I know you have. The question is, have you done a special kind of sequence? Uh, this is called a recursive sequence, and that looks kind of like this. If you can read this and know what's going on, that's awesome, but completely unexpected. I wouldn't expect you to know what that means. But would you look at it for a second? Did any of you actually come in fluent in recursive? Okay, good. Then you're going to learn something. Why do I know it's important? Number one, it's on the ACT. I have kind of an obsession with the ACT. It's a really important thing. Okay, I'm not sure I've told all of you this, uh, but I know I told some of you uh, that this that test made a big difference for my son. Needed a good score to get in the Air Force Academy. One of my daughters needed a better score. She had an awesome score, actually, the first time. But they had this presidential scholarship where if you got a 33, you were automatically going to get the presidential scholarship, which would cut $12,000 off of college. That's a lot of money. So wasn't it worth getting a higher ACT? Yep, it was. So we went and had her take a course. She said the course kind of sucked, but she still learned enough to make it higher, and it worked. She got her scholarship. So I decided to make a better course. Uh, and anyway, bottom line, we've had people improve their ACT scores a lot, uh, and I'm really happy to try to help kids get a better ACT score. So you may have noticed it said top 20 tomorrow. You're going to take a little practice ACT, kind of like a part of an ACT test tomorrow and it's also stuff you need to know for this class I call it my top 20 you've probably seen it before but you're gonna get to master that this is one of the skills that's on the ACT it's called recursive and if you didn't know what that meant you wouldn't be able to like answer the question about it but by the end of the day today you'll know how this works and it's really not that bad all right take a look at this one up here two five eight eleven what's going up by each time three does anybody want to tell me what their gut feeling is on what that's going to be called? Do you think that one's called arithmetic or geometric? What's your gut? You can use context clues. The kind where it's adding. Yes, arithmetic. Okay. If something grows by multiplication, that's sometimes called a geometric growth. So geometric is the kind where you'd multiply by something every time. This kind's the kind where you add it every time. So I've got arithmetic and geometric. Arithmetic is like adding, and subtracting is right in there with it. It's just adding a negative number. Okay. And then geometric is the kind where you multiply. And you might think, or divide. No, you just multiply by a fraction. If you're feeling like it's dividing by two, and then you got to think, oh, so you're multiplying by a half. Geometric is never dividing. It's always multiplying. That's a weird one. All right. So now I hope you've caught on. If it's add three, add three. There's a way to do this on your calculator. And some of you know this trick and some of you don't. Of course you know. You can take two, add three, and you're going to get five, right? So go ahead and do that. Hit two plus three, enter. Do it on the calculator right now. And then let me show you something cool. If you just hit enter again, nothing good's going to happen. But if you add three again, You've now done it twice in a row, then you can just keep hitting enter, 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 enter. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm going to say it again. You start by saying 2 plus 3, hit enter. And then you take and add 3 again and hit enter. And then from that moment on, hit enter, 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 and it'll just keep going up by 3 every single time. You won't have to hit plus 3 every time. You just hit enter. Isn't that handy? All right. Now, how did it's how is that kind of like your memory? We had to do it twice, and then it knew it was important, and it keep doing it. If you just hit plus three once and hit enter, and then keep hitting enter, it doesn't know that that was like that was meant to repeat. But if you do plus three and then hit enter, and then say plus three and hit enter again, it knows. Oh, so you're going to keep doing that. You know what I mean? Kind of like your memory that way. All right. So on this one. Just so you understand, kind of like big picture, 
in this one, it's saying, hey, you should start with five. And what do you think is going to happen each time? Just look at the formula and take a guess. You're going to add four each time. That's how you say it in recursive language. Now let me help you understand what all that u sub 1, you know, that's called a subscript, right? When it's like a little sub number underneath it, it's called a subscript. u sub 1 versus u sub n versus u sub n minus 1. Let me help you understand what all of that means. All right, I do this from time to time. Uh, you guys are able to add a blank page pretty easily, right? Go ahead and add a blank page. I'm going to pause for a second here. So hopefully you've added this page. Now here's what I want to do. Let's say I have a, had a sequence going, and then at some point it hits the number 53, and then I'm going to say that this is a sequence where I add 7, and then it hits 60, and then it goes to 67. Oops, I'm dyslexic for a second there. Do you get what I was doing there? Okay. Do you know what the first term was? No, I can't really tell. I mean, I had a 53 was the first one I showed you, but could have been one in front of that? Yeah, it could have been a whole bunch in front of that. I just am starting at some random place in the middle of a sequence. And that means I don't know which term this is. This could be the 23rd term. I could have started like in the negatives. It could have started with negative 26. It could have started with anything. So I can't tell what term that is. So it's u sub, I don't know. What do you put if you don't know? A variable. That's u sub n. That's what u sub n means. Some unknown term. Now usually there's kids that have learned their math in different ways. Sometimes people learned it online and they were like, I've seen these before, but they didn't use u, they used a different letter. That happens. There can be a a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub n. doesn't have to be a u. It could be an a. It could be a t. I had a kid last hour telling me that they used t sub n when they learned this. All right. And some of you have just never seen it before. All right, how about this? What's that term then? And don't say u sub a different letter. That's not the point. Yes. Yes, sir u sub n plus 1. Then logically, what do you think this random term right in front of u sub n would be? Yes, sir. Yep, u sub n minus 1. Now, some people think I'm saying sub. It's sub for subscript. u sub n minus 1. u sub n and u sub n plus 1. You get I can keep going with that and say like u sub n plus 5, I mean, further down the road. Okay, the point is, you see this in every formula you write for this unit. This unit is actually two units long. We take a test after the first end of the first stuff, and then we do the more complicated stuff, which is like it, except it goes into complicated, like, real-world problems about loans and investments and stuff. And that's the next chapter after this one. So you're going to be doing this for two chapters in a row. Get used to this. U sub n is going to be in every single one. So I'm trying to explain really thoroughly what the heck it is. It's any term. Any random term. All right. And that is given by, if somebody's sleeping right now, they need to wake up because I don't want to have to go over and embarrass them. U sub n is equal to U sub n minus 1. That's going to be in every one of these formulas. What does that mean? U sub n was any random term. U sub n minus 1 means the one in front of it. Who can finish it for my little sequence here? What do you do to get the next term? If you were here, yes. A little louder. Yes. You would just have to add 7. Let's say this what it means. Any random term is equal to the term in front of it plus 7. 
That's what that means. You're going to see that in the middle of your formulas, and then if it wanted you to like times by six, you'd put it right there. If it wanted you to add six each time, you'd put it right here. But this will stay the same. And it means any random term is given by the term in front of it plus seven or times six or whatever. Yes, sir. Got to talk louder. All right. Look on this one. If I want u sub n, don't I have to take the term in front of it? I, I Okay, in front or behind is the thing you're talking about. And I'm talking about this being in front of it because it would have happened first before the other one. You know what I mean? We never go backwards. So that's why I say in front of it, meaning this one. Okay. So this term in front of it has to then add 7 to get to that term. All right. And there's only two other parts of these typical formulas, and that is, do you get that so far all I've told you is how to get the next term, but I never told you what the first term was? You know what I mean? Let's say the first term was negative 3. How would I say that the first term was negative 3? I would say that u sub, how do I say first term? What do you think? u sub what? u sub 1 is negative 3. Now, if you're hearing this alarm, if you know me, you know what that means. What does it mean? 12-minute warning. There's 12 minutes left in this class. And that's a good way to know for you how close are we to the end. And usually on a normal day, I try to wrap it up about then to make sure that you have time for homework. Today, your homework is really short, and uh, I'm going to have to go into the time a little bit further before I set you free on your homework, also because it's a masked day. So you aren't going to get quite as much as 12 minutes today. And you never get 12. I start wrapping it at 12. You usually get about 10 minutes of work time at the end. Okay, so what would this mean? This would mean start with negative 3 and keep adding 7 and go forever. That's what that means. Just keep doing that. And you keep getting more and more and more terms. All right. What if I asked you for the first three terms of this? Well, I'd have negative 3 first, and then I would add 7. So what would I have next? 4, and then I'd add 7, and what would I have next? 11, and then I'd add 7, and what would I have next? 18. Those are the first four terms. Could you have done that with a calculator? Sure. Could you do it in your head? Pretty easy to do in your head. That's one of the things they ask you today is, what are the first four terms of this sequence? So let's see if you can handle that for another one like this. U sub 1 equals 6. U sub n, any, any random term, U sub n minus 1, which is the term in front of it, plus 10. Would you fee please find me the first three terms? A lot of people forget the 6. That's the first term. All right, I want you to show your answer to the person next to you. I'm going to use that loosely today. Whoever happens to be sitting next to you, see if your answer in theirs is the same for the first three terms, please. Rapido, por favor. You compare across. Okay, I'm seeing most of you got this. Six to six, 16, and 26. Raise your hand if you had those right. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm going to ask a question I've never defined, but I think you can figure it out. What was the common difference between those terms? Yes? 10. Some of you are like, difference? Difference means subtract. You're right. How do I get it by subtracting? 16 minus the 6 would give you 10. That's how you get your common difference. You subtract these two, or you just look in the formula right there. That's called the common difference. Would you agree it's the difference between the first term and second term? That's why it's called the common difference. Why is it called common? Because it's the same difference here. Subtract these two, you also get 10. Okay? All right. So... One more thing you're going to see at the bottom of the formulas. Don't bother with it right now, but it'll say n is greater than 2. 
or n is greater than or equal to 2. That's called a domain. You do not have to understand that yet. It just This number and this number will always be one bigger than the other. This will always be one bigger than the one at the top. Don't stress about it. Doesn't matter that much. I'll explain it more later. What I mainly want is it right now, if I say this, you'd be able to get, let's just keep it simpler, the first two terms. Don't say them, write them. Compare them with the kid sitting next to you. These are called arithmetic sequences. I haven't done a geometric one yet because I haven't done one where you multiply. But that's going to be the only difference. All right, compare with the kid next to you. What are your two numbers? 12 and then 9. Raise your hand if you had those right. Okay, good. Then what was the common difference? Negative 3. You would include the negative. It's important, isn't it? I mean, if I just said 3, it would sound like you added 3 every time. How do you get that 3? 9 minus 12 gives you negative 3. Okay, next. I'm going to change it up to multiply. And instead of saying times 5 here, I'm going to put the times 5 over here. And 5 isn't a good number. I'm going to say like times 2. Because 5 is what we started with, so it would be more confusing if I used times 5. Look, it's the same thing. It's instead of adding 2 every time, I'm multiplying by 2. Could I have put the multiply by 2 here? Yeah, but it just would look harder to read. So they usually put the times 2 in front. You get the 2 times something, or taking something times 2 is the same thing. All right, so what's this called? Not arithmetic, geometric. And then it's not a common difference. It's called a common ratio. Why? Because you would take the first few terms, which would be 5, and then 10, and then 20, Get on times it by 2 every time. And I would find the ratio. 10 divided by 5 gives you 2. 20 divided by 10 gives you 2. That's called the common ratio. All right. Now, your homework. You are in an honors class. You have to be able to handle some homework. And I get that today you didn't get that much time to work on it. So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. There's like 10 questions. It's not that bad. I mean, in middle school, you oftentimes have like 23. Okay, you can handle this, but get it done. Okay, because that do collect, collect homework, and I do put it in the grade book. I'm not saying I collect every single one, but I oftentimes will collect your homework. Let's pause for a second. I find the right page. Okay, so in our folder, we had something called homework right here. It's got the little puzzle piece, so you should probably know it's a Schoology quiz. Don't worry, they're not all Schoology quizzes. This is a sometimes thing. And I'm going to questions. And I have my, right there, my list of all of my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 questions, I guess. Now, can you do it twice? Yes, you can. It'll give you the average of the two tries. After, by the way, it will tell you the answers after the first try. Makes it a lot easier the second time. Why would you want to do it twice? Because if you can get your average up to a 75%, I will give you a 100% in the grade book. Say a kid gets a 70% in their first try. If you just don't try again, you get to keep your 70%. But if you try again, and you can bring your average up to 75, which shouldn't be too hard when you have all the answers, then I'll give you a 100% in the grade book. That's a pretty nice thing to have in the grade book on day one. All right. Now, there's a couple things that we didn't talk about very much. You could totally handle this one. It asks you if it's arithmetic or geometric and lists the first four terms. This will be easy. This one, since it's adding six, it's arithmetic. So you put an A. And the first four terms, well, don't forget, it starts with 20. A lot of people forget the 20. They're so busy adding six, they forget it started with 20. Then it's 26. Then it's 32. And then it's 38. Look at this. I'm giving you free answers. All right, this one, some people don't notice that that's multiplied by 1.5. I gave you calculators today just for that. 
Let's do that part right now. Start with the 32, and what do you think we're going to multiply it by? Come on, easy question. 1.5. Go ahead and do that and hit enter. And then again, your calculator won't know you want to keep doing that until you say it again. So you say times 1.5 again. And then you can just keep doing that until you have found the first four terms. So help me out. The first term is obviously 32. When you multiplied by 1.5, what did you get? Louder, please. 48. Awesome. Times by 1.5 again. Next 70 or something? 72. Anyway, people can multiply by 1.5 all by themselves. All right. And arithmetic of the adding, subtracting kind, geometric of the multiply kind. The only other thing that I want to warn you about. Uh, if I want the 10th term, yeah, you just got to keep using the calculator until you found the 10th one. But this chart one is kind of tricky. I want to just warn you, you're not going to be there yet, but in this chart one, just like on the ACT, I would give you this advice. The labels are really important. So this is saying if the N is 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, let's say that's a 1, then this spot right here is u sub 1. This spot right here would be u sub 2. And what is u sub 2? We would follow it over there and find out what number would that be. Well, if I follow the scale that that one's 20, this one must be 10. And I could say that u sub 2 would be, how high is it over here? 10. Notice the n number is here. That's this little number here. That's the trickiest kind. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. Your assignment is that Schoology quiz. It's due when? Tomorrow. You have homework on day one. I know it's rough, but you're in an honors class. You can handle it. It's not that bad. And that's all I've got for you for today.